This is an unofficial, fan-made audiobook. All original stories are owned by Wizards of the Coast. If you are enjoying these stories, please consider subscribing to my Patreon over at patreon.com slash voxoraculum for some special, patron-exclusive content. Thanks. On with the story. Above the felt mark, the sun hung like a silver coin washing out the green fields into a slow roll of undulating grey. A featureless canvas, ready to be splashed red. There would be a battle today. Not a grand clash of armies. Nothing that would make it into the sagas. Just a skirmish, really. On one side, a pack of Skeller raiders, bedecked in grisly trophies, steel thorns jutting from black armour cruel blades hooking and curving like ugly grins. On the other side, significantly fewer, but there nonetheless, were the Tuscari. Scarcely a war party, in truth. No more than a dozen, less than half the warriors that stalked toward them across the open plains. And yet, they staggered forward with all the confidence of roosters. There would be a battle today, and judging from what Nyala saw, it would be a brief one. But it would be a battle nonetheless, so she and Alien, Shepherd and Reaper, had come to watch and to judge. There, said Alien, gesturing with one long and thin finger the Tuscari farthest out in front. That is their new leader. Arnie Brokenbrow, they call him. Great warrior, great gambler, and great drinker by all accounts. Nyala squinted. He was smaller than most of the warriors behind him, and not as broad-shouldered, either. About the only thing that set him apart, other than his bright red hair, was the strange shard of bone which protruded from one side of his forehead like a single horn, narrow and pointed where it met his skull, and tapering out into a jagged base at the end. Leader of all of them. All of them. What is he doing here, then? Alien shrugged. My guess? He was bored. Nyala frowned. To her... A Valkyrie. No mortal seemed to last longer than a sunny afternoon, but the daring and reckless souls of the Tuscari clan flickered out quicker than most. If anything, their leader's mad gambits for valour tended to end them even faster than the rank and file, and Broken Brow appeared to be no exception. It looked like he would be joining his predecessors at the table in Starnheim soon. With almost painful slowness, the two groups drew closer to one another, Skella spreading out into a crescent shape so wide as to nearly encircle the Tuscari. From the rear of both sides came a few curious arrows, most landing on shields, with a few burying themselves here and there into the grass. It had almost arrived, the moment the true selves of each warrior would be revealed. Would they turn and flee, to be cut down by their enemies, or by Alien if they got far enough? Or would they stand and fight, and die a glorious death that Nyala could reward them for? With an easy motion, Ani slipped his sword from its scabbard and spun it once, testing the weight. Then he grinned. In fact, he seemed to be grinning right at her. Nyala froze. It was impossible. Just a coincidence. Even the wisest of mortals couldn't see a Valkyrie unless she wished to be seen. And yet, she couldn't help but feel as if he were trying to tell her something. As if he were saying, Watch this. At the last moment, when both groups were no more than ten strides from each other. The Tuscari broke into a sudden charge, straight at the middle of the Skeller line. At the very front was Arnie Brokenbrow, 
sword held high in front of him, bellowing a war cry that sounded more joyous than wrathful. Well then, said Allian, raising one pitch-coloured eyebrow. He certainly has that Tuscari bravado. Nyala exhaled. The moment with broken brow, if there had been such a moment, had passed. It seems as though your duties won't need fulfilling today, sister, said the Valkyrie, allowing herself a small smile. We'll see, said the Reaper. There's time yet for a bit of cowardice to strike. The Tuscari charge had caught their foes off guard. The Skella hurriedly tried to set a line of spears, and as Nyala watched, the new leader of the Tuscari leaped into the air over the spear tips, over the swinging axes, even over the raised shields, and brought his sword down, straight through the helmet of a wild-looking man in the front row. A breath later, the lines collided with the deafening crash of steel on steel, blades clanging off one another, shields driven together with brutal force, armour shuddering with impact. Nyala's smile faltered. In a moment, it was clear that the Skella couldn't hold the line. They had spread themselves too thin trying to encircle their enemy. The Tuscari punched straight through, cleaving the main body of the raiders in half. It didn't take long after that. Soon, the Skella were broken, fleeing across the open plains. Wordlessly, Alien slipped away to do her dark work. Nyala only watched in dumb amazement as Ani, in the aftermath, planted his rear on a pile of dead warriors nearly as tall as he was, laughing like a man at his wedding. "'Well, well, sister,' said Alien, appearing again by Nyala's side with a smirk. "'It seems your duties are the ones that won't need fulfilling today.'" In the endless halls of Starnheim, Heroes of every age, from every clan, from peoples throughout the ten realms of Kaldheim, feasted and drank for all time. The table couldn't be contained by earthly geometry. It was precisely as long as it needed to be to accommodate the glorious, the valorous, the beings of all race and creed that had earned their seat. And yet, despite knowing this, Nyala couldn't help but feel that one spot along the endless, peerless structure seemed emptier than it should have. By all rights, Broken Brow should have died earlier that day. As a Valkyrie of Starnheim, she had a nose for such things. But, with some embarrassment, Nyala realised she didn't know much else about him. Here, at least, such things were easily remedied. She found Hormgart deep into his cups. Not a difficult task, when the cups were as bottomless as one may desire. Of the dwarven skulls that had won their place at the table, Nyala had always had a soft spot for him. His storytelling always had a grandfatherly ring to it, rather than the boasting theatrics of the others. With the back of one arm, Hormgart wiped at his moustache, gone grey countless centuries ago, and belched. Nyala, what an unexpected honour. It is this, sir, uh, this honour. Hormgart, I was hoping you might be able to tell me about someone. A mortal. You know, it's not as if we all know each other. He's the new leader of the Tuscari. Arnie. Arnie Brokenbrow. Surely you must have heard something. Through the haze of drink, she could see his stone-coloured eyes glinting in the firelight. Ah, broken brow. Well, now that you mention it, yes, I suppose I've heard a tale or two. Further down the table, a song had broken out. Ranks of warriors swayed in time humming an old tune about a Beskir battle maiden, and the mob of suitors she had turned into a war party. The battle maiden in question led the song herself, 
conducting with fingers outstretched. Holmgart didn't seem to notice. His knobby, weathered hand settled on his knees, as if bracing himself. Nyala saw the dozens of little adjustments he made. The straightening of his back, the tilting of his head, the clearing of his throat. Holmgart had a story to tell. You know, he wasn't always called Broken Brow. Oh? He was called Goat Leaper once, said Holmgart, tapping his nose. Until one fateful day. One fateful day, deep in the Tusk Mountains, word spread of a scourge of murderous trolls, terrorizing villages all along the Red Ridge. Now, the Tuscari, being who they were, couldn't have been more pleased at the news. Trolls meant danger, and danger meant a chance at daring, and daring meant an opportunity to make your name. Of all the Tuscari warriors saddling up to hunt trolls, for there were many indeed, it happened to be a small band, led by none other than Arnie Goatleaper, who began their search on the very slope in which the trolls had made their den. In the high crags of the Tusk Mountains, flanked on all sides by jutting spears of red stone, Nyala and Alien watched the man known as Arnie Brokenbrow court death once again. This time it wasn't the cold steel of a Skella raiding party that might deliver it. It was a dragon. A hellkite, said Alien, technically. Fine, said Nyala. A hellkite, then. Terminology aside, it was massive, all tooth and claw and barbed spine, with four curving horns and a tail that whipped through the air in terrible, scything arcs. Arnie and his band of Tuscari had it surrounded, but it wasn't doing them much good. Any time one of them darted in with a spear or an axe, a slash of that fearsome tail, any time one of them darted in with a spear or an axe, a slash of that fearsome tail made them reconsider. Just outside the loose circle of warriors, seemingly oblivious to the thrashing, snarling beast, Arnie Brokenbrow fiddled with a length of rope. "'What is he doing?' said Nyala, biting her lip. "'He'll never die a worthy death, just... just dying knots.' Down in the crags, one man stepped forward, bellowing bravely, and swung a heavy two-handed sword into the flank of the beast. It bounced off the scaled hide as if he had swung it with all his might into a rock. The Hellkite curled its serpentine head around and fixed him with a pair of coal red eyes, and the man dropped his sword and ran as fast as his legs could carry him. Don't you have duties to attend to? muttered Nyala to her sister. Alien watched the man belly dive to the floor of the canyon to avoid a lash of the beast's tail. In this case, I would say it was less an act of cowardice than of common sense. Arnie tugged at the series of knots one more time, and, satisfied, stood up. Now, Nyala could see that he had tied a loop in the rope. Slowly, at first, he began to spin it around his head. With an expert toss, he flung the lasso straight into the path of the Hellkite's head, where it snagged on one of the horns, and pulled taut. Instinctively, the creature jerked back, taking Arnie with it. Nyala gasped as the Tuscari leader was slung through the air directly toward one of the natural spires ringing the valley floor. Directly towards the natural spires ringing the valley floor. But just before he slammed into it, Arnie seemed to twist in the air. Instead of hitting the red stone spine first, he landed on it with both boots, his body compressing like a spring. To Nyala, it almost seemed like he had meant to do that. 
The Hellkite seemed to understand what had happened even less than the Valkyrie. With an air-splitting shriek, it thrashed backwards. In the split second before it pulled him from the rock, Nyala saw it again. That grin from before. Watch this. This time, the beast jerked straight away, rearing back and yanking Arnie straight toward it. When he landed just behind the creature's head, coiled rope in hand, he took only a moment to steady himself, as if he were on the back of a rocking ship rather than a raging monster. It pitched and turned, but with the rope held tight and his weight dropped low, Arnie couldn't be shaken off. It wasn't just Nyala watching as Arnie slipped his blade from its scabbard and held it up, glinting like a mirror in the sunlight. All the Tuscari gaped, wide-eyed, as their leader drove the blade between the creature's horns. A moment later, its mammoth body crashed to the valley floor. Unbelievable, whispered Nyala. He actually... He actually... It seems that your favorite human lives to fight another day, said Alien, finishing the thought for her but Nyala could barely hear her. She was thinking, instead, of the story Hormgart had told her. Arnie's naming story. After a long and arduous climb, Arnie and his band of brave warriors paused to catch their breath. It was then that they heard the telltale sounds of trolls, bones snapping animals growling and that grumbling, rumbling language of theirs, spilling out from a nearby cave. Creeping closer, Arnie found far more than just a couple of stone-eaters. There seemed to be a whole reeking warren of the creatures. Arnie and his warriors were outnumbered, that was certain. But if they left now to round up more sword-hands, Someone else might stumble across this cave and steal their glory before they could return. Now, Arnie was a mighty warrior, that much was true. But he was more than simply strong. He was cunning, too. After a few whispered words and a blessing or two from the cleric they had brought along for the climb, Arnie stepped out from behind the rock. I he said to the surprised faces and gaping tusked mouths staring at his sudden arrival. You're the lot that have been reading up and down the ridge. Now, I've got a whole army of berserkers out there, ready to tear your heads off. But I figure I'd give you a chance to settle this a different way. A headbutting contest, he proposed, grinning. Losers pack up and leave these mountains forever. Without a doubt, Tova Giant's blood was the biggest human Nyala had ever seen. He stood a full head and a half over the other Kanar warriors that emerged from the tree line. His bare chest, tattoos dancing with each steaming breath, was twice as broad as any other present. Even the massive pines of the older guard seemed somehow diminished when he passed under them. Arnie was rarely the largest person in the room, but in front of Giant's blood, he seemed little more than a boy. This is it, said Nyala from where she watched off to the side, flapping her wings now and then to get a better look. This must be an honor duel with that? Broken Brow's death? As finally, finally found him. And what a glorious death it would be. Nyala could hardly wait to congratulate him on a valorous life, to show him the endless halls in which he would spend eternity drinking, feasting, and fighting. She had already waited so damn long. Alien, though, didn't seem convinced. She only tilted her head, a small smile on her face. What? said Nyala. Well, said the Reaper, 
It's not like the last eight times turned out the way you thought they might. It's starting to sound like wishful thinking is all. Nyala scowled and turned back to the assembled warriors. They had formed a circle now, twelve paces across. Kanar and Tuskeri both, closing in the two men. From his back, giant's blood unslung an axe. It was a weapon for ogres, for trolls, with a double-bladed head of solid iron, though he seemed to heft it easily enough. Broken brow, he bellowed, in a voice that shook the snow from nearby branches. I'll give you one chance to repent. Grovel before me and my ancestors. Beg our forgiveness for desecrating the resting place of my family. And you can leave this circle alive. But Arnie only scratched at his red beard, grinning. Where's the fun in that, Tover? Though, being honest, all this seems like a lot of trouble. Surely you've gotten lost and pissed somewhere you shouldn't have before. Giant's blood's lips curled back at that, revealing teeth like stone slabs. Draw your blade, little man. Obligingly, Arnie pulled his sword from his scabbard. Against this opponent, it seemed little more than a dagger, but still glinted, bright and sharp, in the weak blood sky sun. There was no cautious circling, no testing one another's form. With an ursine roar, Giant's blood charged forward, swinging the axe in an arc nearly as broad as the circle itself. Arnie ducked beneath it and moved to close the, gla- to close the gap between them, but Giant's blood had that monstrous axe head crashing toward him again in a heartbeat. Arnie jumped back, dancing along the edge of the circle, and Nyala pumped her fist in happy triumph. "'Fight bravely, yes!' she whispered, mostly to herself. "'Be courageous and heroic, and actually die this time.' Again, the big man swung, and again Arnie tried to dart forward before Giant's blood could recover. This time, though, he caught a boot to the stomach, and tumbled backward, into the knees of the warriors surrounding them. Nyala couldn't help but wince at the impact. A moment later, Arnie was back on his feet. Again and again, those terrible swings failed to cleave Arnie in half, but he couldn't seem to do much other than dodge and duck and roll. It wasn't just Giant's Blood's long arms that made the man hard to close with, it was the way those broad and murderous strokes never seemed to cease. Any ordinary warrior would have been wheezing and panting by now, but obviously Tova Giant's blood was no ordinary warrior. He stepped in for another swing, and Arnie braced himself to dodge. Suddenly, Tova brought up the haft of the axe in a sharp jab, cracking into Arnie's jaw and sending him flying. A feint, said Alien. That big one's not the mindless brute he appears to be. Nyala didn't respond. Her eyes were fixed on Arnie, who spat blood into the snow as he picked himself as he picked himself up off the ground. He wasn't smiling anymore. There was a focused look to his face now, a seriousness that the Valkyrie had never seen before. A strange feeling began to bubble and swirl in Nyala's stomach. Was she Worried? As Giant's blood swung again, this attack no less brutal and quick than his countless others, Arnie didn't dodge, duck or roll. He stepped into the swing, toward his enemy inside the path of the axe head, and chopped down at the wooden haft with his sword. There was a splintering crack as the circle momentarily parted as men and women leaped out of the way of the freed axe head. It buried itself in the trunk of one of the towering pines surrounding them. Arnie, too, was sent reeling by the force of the blow. 
For a moment, Giant's blood seemed stunned. He stared at the broken haft in his hand, now no better than a walking stick. But as Broken Brow picked himself up off the ground for the third time that day, the Kanar lunged forward. Before Arnie could bring up his sword, Giant's blood cinched him tight in a bear hug, pinning his arms to his side and lifting him up off the ground. Arnie thrashed and squirmed. He kicked, struggled, and swore, but all his wily speed and daring he'd shown earlier was useless now. He had been caught, like a rabbit in a snare. The crowd of warriors, which had been whooping and shouting moments before, went quiet. All Nyala could hear was the small, muffled gasps Arnie made as Giant's blood squeezed tighter and tighter, the sinews on his massive arms bulging with effort. The sword dropped from the Tuscari leader's hand, landing soundlessly in the slurry of snow and dirt underneath them. Nyala, said Alien, putting a hand on her shoulder. Her voice was surprisingly tender. Perhaps... Perhaps you shouldn't see this. No, said Nyala, shaking her head. I have to be here. At the end. A few more moments, a few more laboured breaths, and it would be over. She could finally escort Arnie to Starnheim. She could, at last, bring him to the eternal reward he deserved. Wasn't that what she wanted? It was her duty. It was her honour. And yet, Nyala found she didn't want Arnie to be crushed to death by this bear of a man. She wanted him to find some way out of this mess, as he always seemed to. She wanted him to win. She didn't want the legend of Arnie Brokenbrow to pass into history just yet. In fact, she wouldn't allow it. Nyala spread her wings and moved toward the circle. But before she could get any closer, Alien stepped in front of her. Nyala, it's an honor jewel. But, even if it wasn't, we are Valkyries. It is not our place to intercede in the affairs of mortals. You know this. It was true, all of it. Only Nyala didn't care. She was trying to think of some point, some argument that would move her sister out of the way. When she saw it, over Alien's shoulder. Arnie was grinning. A grin she had seen so many times before. Watch this. Giant's blood had lifted him fully into the air now, all the better to leverage that monstrous strength of his. For the first time in the fight, the two saw eye to eye. Arnie drew his head back, back, back. And suddenly, Nyala remembered how Hormgart's story had ended. How Arnie Broken Brow had gotten his name. Hours passed. The sun sank low over the red peaks of the Tusk Mountains, and still... Arnie and the troll continued. Both were tired, bloodied, dizzy from the constant impacts. But Arnie was still grinning as he stepped forward for yet another headbutt. The troll, on the other hand, looked like he could scarcely believe what was happening. The human was actually keeping up with a troll in a headbutting contest. He was ashamed. But more than that, he was frightened. What if this small, grinning man actually beat him? In that moment of fear and uncertainty, the troll decided to do something not unfamiliar to troll kind. He decided to cheat. It was time. 
Both Arnie and the troll set their feet and craned their heads back for a savage blow. But just as Arnie swung forward, the troll angled his tusks up toward the Tuscary's brow. It was, of course, a terrible mistake. There were many as strong or stronger than Arnie Goatleaper, and many as cunning or more cunning but few who matched his strength or his cunning could also match the thickness of his skull. There was a sound like striking lightning, a crack that reverberated through the cave. When it passed, the troll lay flat on his back, one of his tusks snapped off at the root. Above him, victorious and bloody, troll bone embedded in his forehead, was Arnie Goatleaper. Only his name was Goatleaper no longer. <laughs> <laughs>